something that actually just kind of came in front of me all of a sudden and it was a bit of a surprise for me too that I ended up getting one of them but it's something I wanted to get for a long time reason being I'm taking on to do a couple of new projects I'm already working on extension to our house at the minute and we have to put finished floors in there and there's about three meters of concrete to be poured there as well and there's a lot of work to be done now in the next year or so we're going to be also building the shed over here in the corner that I talked about before and I'm hoping to do a lot of that work myself so one thing I did really need well, first of all, I'll show you what I was using. And that is over here in the corner. Past the little Ferguson. And past something, which is, for another video, really cool. But this is our mixer. This is my little mixer that I have uh, about 25 years, I'd say. I think I bought it when I was 15 or so. It's a little Alstrad mixer. I've shown it quite a few times in the channel already. It's in very good condition. I put a new motor in it. I put new belts in it. It's electric, obviously. Very, very handy. But, and it's a big but, it doesn't hold a whole pile. It's a what you class as a half bag mixer. Well, a bag now it is. We used to have the big bags, and that's what we used to call a bag mixer. Doesn't hold a whole pile. If you're putting in maybe a post here and there, okay, fine. But if you're doing any kind of other work, it's just not big enough, especially for putting in floors, like I'm intending to do now in a day or two's time, to put in a floor about three meters, two and a half, three meters of concrete very slow oh tediously slow so i have been looking online and yesterday morning i came in for breakfast and i spent a bit of time looking online just at different mixers and this one particular guy seemed to have a lot of mixers at his house so i gave him a call had a good chat he sounded like a nice fella on the phone and it was pouring rain yesterday so i had to go over the clarks to pick up what i'm going to show you now in a wee while down in the house this fella didn't live too far away from there and i just said a call out to him and i called out to him and without further ado this little one popped up it's a 150 uh, concrete mixer diesel engine now doesn't look like any oil painting but actually it's very straight i spent about two hours last night giving it a really good wash down we took about two buckets of the yellow buckets that i have in my dairy the big buckets of cement off it inside as well we really give it a good clean out and it made a huge difference to it. I'm already going round now looking at bits and pieces that I have to maybe do on it just to leave it perfect. But it's running sweet. It's got one of those Lister engines in it, a one litre engine. They are known for being a powerful little engine. Um, it's probably something in the 70s, um, I think, when they came out. Um, but a great little engine. They've been known to take serious abuse. And trust me, anyone that has a cement mixer usually abuses them and that's just the truth of it they don't think nothing of the engine they fire any old kind of fuel into it and they just want something reliable and it has got the reputation of being a lovely little reliable engine obviously hand start we'll show that in a few minutes how it starts and um, quite simple straightforward and uh, it's on these wheels which basically means you don't pull it after a car you just pull it after yourself but what i'll probably end up doing is putting a fitting on it for the back of the quad that I can just move around the yard. Now on the road, you can't take it on the road. Um, for the road, there's two forklift points there and I've already used them to take it off the trailer and just come along with the forks in the case, pick it up and bring it over to the farm if I have to or move it any long distance that I have to go or even drop it onto the trailer. But for moving around the yard, the quad with pulls at the best. Um, it's great as well because it's got a swivel here on the front. So when you do go to pull it, it'll turn on a 360 which is absolutely great and it is quite easy to pull after you and the man that had it done a little job and he put a new bearing into the inside so we had a cut into here just to punch the bear, old bearing out and then just weld it back up again i've often seen that done but the grease pints is here i'm after going over them last night and giving it a good greasing but otherwise than that there's no rot everything's very good on it there's no rot really on it whatsoever it's just cement has got self stuck to it but the drum itself's in very good condition and um, don't mind the cement on the outside there's no real cracks there's no massive dints um, it's nice and circular normally you see these and the end of them be all bashed in this is not because what happens is people want to get the cement off and the worst thing you could ever do is hit them with a hammer and smash off the concrete by banging them on the outside with a hammer you shouldn't do that you should wash your mixer but if you don't wash your mixer use a little SDS drill or something like that and just go along with a flat chisel and chisel it off or fill it with water and loads of gravel and let it run for half an hour or so and that'll work wonders and that's what I'm going to do to this um, down the lane. These are quite expensive new. I got it a good value. It made sense to me to get one. 
Um, as I say, machinery shed's going over there. I will be pouring concrete, putting down posts and things myself, so it made sense to me to get a good size mixer. Something I wanted a long time. I kind of was pushing towards a tractor one first, and then I just thought of the handiness of this one here. It's all in one, and the tractor's not sitting ticking over all day if you're mixing for a long period of time. These little engines are known to run on the smell of fuel. Small little tank, um, diesel as well, so it's not going to be too hard run. So that's it, that's our mixer. Um, it does need a bit of work. You can see there's a bend in the axle there. That's going to have to be straightened, not the end of the world. Um, a couple of other things, the hood here is the one thing that really lets it down. It's well bashed up, like a lot of them do be. Um, I'm going to take that hood off, and I'm going to straighten it out as best I can, and make it look just a little bit better than what it is. Another thing we will have to address, not now, but soon, we're going to have to do something with the wheels. Two of them's okay, but these two are rotten. Um, as you can see here, if you can see there, rotten. Good thing about these as well is you can get all the parts of them still. So wheels, actually quite expensive. They're around about 60 quid a pop. That's as cheap as I could find them. If you know where I could get a set of wheels for it or know someone that maybe is breaking one of these and has a good set of wheels on it that aren't rotten, let me know. I'd definitely be interested in buying them. Last thing you want is to be pulling around the yard. Next thing the wheel falls off and the whole thing topples over. Another thing we're going to be doing right now is we're going to be servicing this little engine. We're going to change the aisle on it. Have a new one of these air filters, just pull off, um, order for it. We're going to open this little sediment bowl here and see what the diesel is like in it, because trust me, a lot of these yokes, people just run down to the nearest shop, any kind of oil drum that could get to put diesel into it and just fire it into it. So I'm expecting that it's going to be full of oil crud and things. Although it is running well, um, I'm still expecting a lot of stuff to be in there because it doesn't look like it's been opened in a while. Another thing we're going to do is this cover. You see how twisted it is? Well, we're going to take that cover off now to actually access these things a little easier and change the dial. And we'll straighten that when we have it off. A few other things that I noticed as well is this. That here is broken. You can see there. So we're going to clean it up and put a little stripper weld across there to hold that in place. The other one's absolutely fine. This cover here was all bent absolutely bent in bits it was just hanging on by a thread so it's not bent now straightened it all out two new bolts holding it in place inside there there's a two to gear and um, for torn this so when you turn this this way it goes the opposite way and um, so that was all in there so when we had the cover off we greased everything stuff in there never seen grease probably since it was new so we give everything a real good greasing in there straighten the cover and put it back on this uh, handle here for pulling it Normally it'd be tied up like that. Um, I'm gonna make something, because um, I don't like tying stuff. I'm gonna make something that will hold it up in place um, when it's not in use, people tripping over it. So we're gonna do something with that, fix that up, make a better job of that. Maybe put something there and put a chain on it. Let's just start this engine and um, let it run for a while just to heat up before we change the aisle. So you have a little decompression lever here you push forward. You put her into start down here. There we are. Keep that push forward. That tap of noise is coming from the cage here. It's just coming from the pulley. It's nothing to do with the engine. The engine itself is running absolutely fine. So they only put out about five, six horsepower, so not a very strong engine. They don't need to be. Right, so the first thing I'm probably going to have a look at is this sediment bowl. Open this little bolt in the bottom, drop it down. I'm just really interested in seeing how much rubbish is laying in the bottom of this. This sediment bowl. It's an unusual one. Any of you come across one of those, let me know. I thought when I dropped this nut, this whole sediment bowl would come down. It didn't. And it doesn't look like it's come down since day one. Whether it's seized up there, I don't want to break anything. So there was a little bit of moisture on the bottom, but there definitely was. So I'm hoping that has released any moisture that might have been in it. We put fresh new fuel into it. There wasn't much fuel in it. I'm not going to touch it until I look into it a wee bit more and see. Does it actually come off in the first place? Because I don't want to damage something. Yeah, let me know in the comment box below. Have you ever come across one of these? Do they actually come off? Is there a filter in there? I don't think there is. I think it's just a sediment bowl, a settling bowl and otherwise. And all you do is release the um, any water. There will obviously, water will always go to the bottom. 
and any water's in it you just every so often just let it out no water in it there often looks good let's get on to the aisle i put these things in the most awkward of positions well, that's why i'm having to use this jug because nothing else will fit underneath i'm just gonna let it a wee bit at a time it should come out yeah there we go oh nice black looking stuff that I wouldn't think that oil was changed in a long time. Right, well last train and I've noticed here we have an oil leak. Now I don't know how bad it is, but I can see where it's coming from. There's a gasket that goes around here, and it's quite common for them gaskets to fail. You can get that gasket, so I am probably going to order one of those for it. We'll just have to see how bad it is. It could be just old crud that's been laying there a long time. I'm going to clean it up um, now with some brake cleaner and leave it for a while and see how bad the oil leak is. And if it is something that needs to be addressed, I'll order a new seal for that there and replace that, not a big job. One thing about my yards, there's nearly not a place in the entire yard that's level. So I want to just jack it up a wee bit just to get it kind of level. That to me looks level. Yeah, I'm happy enough with that. Let's see what we're at. Now we're starting to register. So we need a small, small amount more. Perfect. Next thing to do then is fill her full of fresh diesel. We may have to bleed her to get her running again. And um, that's not a hard job to do either. And um, but that's the next thing we want to do. Just open this sediment bowl again here. Just let the air out, let it fill up. Because it's bound to be air in it. I do see in here, we've got a little injector right there. And um, I'm feeling that what I need to do is probably loosen this top nut or loosen this actual screw here. Um, it's got a flat head on it, so I'd say I'd have to loosen that to just bleed it. But you know, what I want to do first of all is I'm going to actually see will it start and see is it air locked. And if it is, then the next thing to do, because there's no pump on this, is to actually open that there, give her a few turnovers, and she should start spitting out diesel here. <laughs> But that's the oil change, very important, nice fresh clean oil and more importantly again it didn't give me any hassle, it didn't airlock um, which is great, it's running there nice and smoothly. This is this panel here now that's twisted, yeah nice hoop on that there so we'll straighten that out we put it back into place. That looks a lot better. Another thing I done was this by here for starting it. He was all twisted every shape and direction, so I've straightened that out a wee bit. Looks much better. Didn't take very long, and yeah, every wee bit helps. Right, so that's the engine took care of the most important part of the mixer. You see there, that should move up and down, so it's broken there. So I'm after grinding it. Um, sorry for the echo in there, but I'm after grinding it out. Not easy to get at. I get the welder up here now, and I'm going to weld that into place. And I'm also going to do something about this handle. Oh, how are you going on? What's the crack? Right, so that's that side all welded now and done. Finished, nice and secure. Nothing going to go wrong there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tackle this handle. We're going to put something on this handle now to actually fix it up 
that will stay up there. I always keep all bits and pieces of stuff that was taken apart or working on. And this was actually a handle to a door that I took off a couple of years back. And that will fit directly on there, just perfectly. So we're gonna weld that onto place and then we'll work out what way we're gonna attach it up there. do now is lift it up boom that's the handle out of the way just keeps it out of the way you don't have to tie it I hate tying stuff I cannot stand tying stuff that's about the way that's welded to it there now it's not going to move anymore and no chains attached to the actual mixer itself you don't want any chains around that area where it's spinning or ropes or anything like that just on the handle so that when it's released like that it's just down on the ground and out of the way, and that's what you wanted. Job's a good one. Would I paint it? I don't know. They don't look great when they're painted. They look actually older looking when you paint them, if that makes sense. It's a cement mixer. I don't think I'll paint it. One thing I might do is this area here that was kind of rebuilt with a new bearing went onto it. I might put a bit of yellow paint on this here, or maybe grey paint. Sometimes you see some of them with grey paint on them as well. Just on that area there, this bare. Otherwise than that, no. I don't know, we'll see. It's just a mixer. I wanted to do this work and that's what it's here for. I have a lorry load of sand actually just on its way now to me. So yes, straight to work, it'll be going. So that's that job finished. That machine is ready to rock now. But something else is sitting behind me here now. If you remember I go back a good few videos ago when the winter was just ending, we're coming into springtime. We had a bit of trouble with our yard scraper, our Honda yard scraper. Well, guess what just returned? The lads and clerks, if you remember, promised me a new engine would be would arrive by August there was a delay on stuff to come in this engine actually did arrive in early July ahead of schedule I just didn't get around to picking the thing up I only picked it up there yesterday when I was picking up this scraper all in one run but as you can see brand new engine it's a different engine it is Honda as you can see Honda Easy Start 17 a GCVX um, that's the engine is now it's, it's different in good areas compared to the last one and um, if you remember me talking about the last one one of the big problems I had was this throttle. Um, on the last one, it was just a very peculiar setup. It was actually very badly thought out. It was a 10 mil nut that was attached to this to hold this cable in place. And that 10 mil nut was rubbing back and forth on this. And that was causing these to break. As you can see, this is a steel one I've on here and even the cap broke off it because there was such tension on trying to get this uh, to move back and forth nice and easily. Now it's changed. A simple little change has made a world of difference. Um, it's also different on this side as well, different exhaust. Um, the other engine used to split across here. That's all different now. The other engine was filling with water. All the time filling with water and we couldn't find out what was causing it because we always had a creamy oil in it all the time. And yes, could have made a bit of a mistake myself. I was using the power washer every so often to wash the scraper down because it gets covered in cow dung and you do like to wash it down. But I was keeping the power washer off the engine, but maybe some of the overspray was getting into some of the seals. One of the guys in Clarks told me, remember Adrian, some of them seals that's in that engine are designed to keep oil from getting out, not water that's pressurized getting in. And I'd say that's what your main thought was. You were power washing it, and unfortunately a little bit of water got in, and it's very hard to get that creamy stuff out once it gets in. So that could have been causing it. That engine was destroyed. There was no point in spending a heap of money trying to fix it. I wasn't going to put it back into the scraper. So now we have a new engine and hopefully our scraper is back to full good health because you know something, it's a very, very important thing in our farm. We absolutely love it for scraping the yards and things and we'd be lost without it. This time of year, summertime, we don't tend to use it. And um, you can get a different attachments for sweeping and things like that, but we tend not to use it in the, in the summertime at all. Winter time, non-stop, pushing back silage, cleaning slats. It's great. The power that it has is just brilliant. Back, it's another thing fixing the farm, and yes, we could have done without having to put a new engine in it, yes, without a doubt. But you know what? 
it still made more sense to put a new engine into it than buying a whole new machine because it would have been an awful lot more expensive and i'm glad we did because the rest of it is absolutely fine there's new rubber everything on it we will give this here a lick of paint just to clean that up but everything else in it as you can see is pretty much like new tires and all so it wasn't worth us having to go and buy a new machine i just wasn't going to spend that kind of money new engines on hopefully that is the end of the problems we will not power wash it anymore anytime we have to clean off any dung and things we'll just brush it off use an ordinary hose tap and cover the engine when we're doing it we won't let any water near that engine anymore so that's it for today's video hope you enjoyed it it's just something a little different it's the first stepping stone of getting ready to actually do something over here in this shed i'm weighing up what i'm going to do i don't really know yet i'm thinking about putting down posts of somewhat whether it's going to be esb poles or whether it's going to be rsjs i don't know the price of steel is just chronic at the minute and that is what's holding me back so i don't want to pay extortion prices for the way things are at the minute because the thing will calm down it will calm down and when it does calm down we can start thinking about what we're going to use it's not going to be built this year it's probably going to be next year before i get time to get at it and um, you never know we'll see what happens i could take the notion and just start into it that is the way i kind of do things if i see a window i make use of it that's kind of the way it works now at the minute but we will get something done i'm still thinking about it it's been sitting on the long finger because it is going to cost quite a few pound if we go down to build an all steel shed if i do a lot of the work myself it will cost a fraction of that so but that's going to take up an awful lot of time which i don't really have an awful lot of its last while i haven't taken the sunday off in the last three months i've been working every single day and you know what it's nice to get a day off so i am going to have to start thinking about taking an odd day off during the week because you miss out on an awful lot of things football matches i'm missing out on camogie matches i'm missing out on spending time with the kids you just miss them kind of things when you're working all the time so i'm gonna have to ease off a little bit learn to take an odd day off it's probably something i'm not used to doing i like working i enjoy working but still there comes days when you should take a little bit of time off so i'm trying trying to change there so anyway folks thanks very much for watching as always if you haven't already hit that sub button give us a like you can follow us on instagram facebook the links are all in the description until the next one talk to you again We're enough done for the day no good boy billy let's go